Okay, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to look at uh, the linear programming. Um, and one of the story problems. Number five. Okay, so this is on page 486, number five. It's talking about furniture. I'll just read the problem real fast. It says we've got a furniture manufacturer makes wooden tables and chairs. The production process involves two basic types of labor, carpentry and finishing. Okay, so carpentry and finishing and we're making tables and chairs. Okay. A table requires two hours of carpentry, so I'll maybe put T for table is two hours. Um, one hour of finishing. We've got table is one hour of finishing. And then a chair requires three hours of carpentry. and then one half hour of finishing. Okay. The profit is $35 per table. So profit for a table is $35. Oops. Throw that in there, okay table we got $35 and $20 per chair. Okay. The manufacturer's employees can supply a maximum of 108 hours of carpentry work. Okay, so the max amount of carpentry we can do is 108 hours. Okay, and then the max finishing we can do is 20 hours. Okay, per day, and we want to know how many chairs and tables should we make each day to maximize our profits. Okay, so this is a linear programming problem. So what we want to do is our first step is we want to uh, write our objective function, okay? Okay, so this is the thing that we want to uh, maximize. And so um, in this case, the thing that we're trying to make as big as possible is the profit, right? That's what we want to maximize. So um, I want to write an equation for the profit in terms of how many tables and chairs I make. So maybe we'll say T is the number of tables and C is the number of chairs. So in this case, my objective function would be, um, well, I get 35 for each table and 20 for each chair. So my profit P would be, um, well, I do, I would do 35 times the number of tables, right? And then plus 20 times the number of chairs, okay? So that is our um, objective function. Now, um, now that we have the objective function, what we can do this is the thing that I want to make as big as possible. So now what I want to do is I want to look at the feasible region of my situation. Okay, so let's look at feasible region. And what I need to do is create some uh, inequalities that describe the constraints that I have in this problem, right? The real constraint I have is how much time 
uh, can I spend on carpentry? And how much time can I spend on finishing? Well, I can spend at maximum 108 hours on the carpentry and I can only spend 20 hours on finishing, okay? So those are kind of my constraints that I have. So let's write some inequalities based off that. Well, let's start with the carpentry. We know that we can have a maximum of 108. So we know whatever amount of carpentry we have, we know that it's gotta be less than or equal to 108, okay? And so then how much carpentry will we have in terms of the number of tables and chairs that I make? Well, each table takes two hours. So I'm gonna have two times the number of tables will give me how much time I spent on carpentry making my tables. And then I'm gonna add in the amount of carpentry I use on my chairs, so three times the number of chairs, okay? That should be less than 108 because this is the total amount of time I'm gonna be spending on my carpentry, okay? For finishing, what I'm going to need to do is have the total time be less than or equal to 20. Excuse me, the lighting isn't very good here. Let's switch this so that it's a little more lit. Okay, there we go. So um, in this case, each table takes one hour. So you've got one times the number of tables will give you the time that you spend finishing the, the tables that you have. And then you're gonna add in the time you spend on the chairs. So one half times the number of chairs, okay? This is the total amount of time that you will spend finishing, okay? So this is, these are the two things that we have to have happen based on this situation, okay? And then uh, we also just need the number of tables and chairs. We need both of those to be bigger than or equal to zero, right? You can't have negative uh, numbers of tables and chairs, okay? So this is our feasible region. Uh, it's given by these inequalities. Now we just have to graph uh, what this looks like, okay? And so to do that, um, <laughs> I'm gonna maybe treat T like it's the Y in this case, okay? So um, it doesn't really matter what you treat as Y and X in this, but I'm gonna say T is kind of the Y and we'll say C is kind of the X. And so I'm gonna solve for T in each of these inequalities so I get kind of an idea of what they look like. Okay, so T on this one will be less than or equal to two-thirds C. And then we're going, or sorry, negative two-thirds C. Oh, I'm going crazy. Negative three-halves C, because we're gonna subtract the three C over and then divide by two. Okay, and then divide by two with this 108. Let's see, what's that gonna be, 54? Okay, so T is less than or equal to negative 3 half C plus 54. And then this one's pretty easy to do. This one turns into T. We just subtract the 1 half C over. So negative 1 half C plus 20. Okay, so those are my two equations. So I'm kind of, when I'm graphing this, I'm treating my, uh, my C like it's the X. So this is my C axis, this is my T axis, okay? And so now I'm just gonna sketch kind of a basic graph of what this would look like. Um, I don't know exactly, but it's gonna be up here at 54. 
Maybe I'll go up by tens. One, two, three, four, five, and a little bit more. Okay, so we'll say that these are 10 here. So I went up 54, that's my y-intercept, and then I'm my slope is negative 3 halves. So we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, and then over 2. So something along those lines will be my first line. Okay. For my second line, I'm up here at 20, and then I'm going down 1 over 2. So something like this. Okay. So our feasible region, the region where it makes sense, is we need to be be below both of these lines. And so it's going to be this region and here, right? And we need to be above 0 on the x and the y, right? So it's going to be this region right in there. That's our feasible region, okay? So now all we have to do is find the vertices and figure out where this is going to reach a maximum. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, let's see here. Maybe I'll move this one so that we can get some new space. Okay. So that's our uh, feasible region here. So the vertices are the corners, right? So right here, right here, right here, and right here. Those are my vertices. So this first one is just at the origin. It's at zero, zero. That's not too hard. Um, the second one is the x-intercept, right, or the c-intercept of this line here, right, the, the one that has y-intercept 54. This is that line, okay? So um, the x-intercept will happen where y equals 0 or where t equals 0 in our case. So to find out where that is, I'm using this equation and I would just set that equal to zero. So zero equals negative three halves C plus 54. Okay. And then solve for C. So I'd subtract over the 54 and then times by negative two thirds over. So C is two thirds times 54. I'm not sure what that is. Um, 54 divided by 3. Let's see. That's 18. And then times 2 would give me 36. Okay, so this would be 36. Okay. So this point right here, well, c is uh, c is 36, right? It's 36 over, and then it's 0 up. So that's my second verte vertex of this feasible region. Um, so that's to find that vertex. It's just the c-intercept there. Now, this vertex is where these two lines intersect, right? And so to do that, I want to know, well, the two lines are t is negative 3 half c plus 54, and the other line is t equals negative 1 half c plus 20, okay? So essentially, I just want to figure out where these intersect. So where they're both solved for t, I'm just going to set these two equal to each other. So negative 3 half c plus 54 equals 
negative 1 half c plus 20. Okay, and then we'll solve for c. So I'm going to add 1 half on both sides. So negative 3 halves plus 1 half give me negative 2 halves. So in other words, negative c plus 54. And we got rid of that negative 1 half c by adding it over. It's equal to 20. Then just subtract 54 from both sides. So negative 34. So I think c is 34. Okay, so that would be the x or the c value of this one. So 34. Then to find y or t, we would plug that c back into one of these equations. I, I think I'll do this one. That's a little bit easier. So t equals negative 1 half times 34. That's a weird 34 uh, plus 20. So we've got negative 17 here plus 20. This is 3. Okay. So this point is at 34 and 3. Okay. And then the last point that we need is this y-intercept here on the this line, right? Which it was up at 20, right? So this was at 20, or sorry, not 20 goes first. It's 0 goes first because that's what c is, and then 20. So that's your, 20 was your y value there. Okay. So 0 and 20 is where that one is. So we now have all three, or sorry, all four of the vertices. Okay. And we got those, right, by figuring out where, where these lines intersected other lines, essentially solving systems of equations to do that. Okay. So I'm going to maybe remove this again. And let's look back at what were we trying to do. We found the um, objective function. And then we found our feasible region based on these inequalities. We used those lines to figure out the vertices along this, um, this feasible region. And so then lastly, what we just need to do is figure out where the max or the min, in this case, we're looking for the max, uh, where that happens, okay? So remember the objective function we made, that's what we're trying to maximize. So we just plug the vertices, the maximum has to happen at the ver one of the vertices. We just plug the vertices in and check where is it the biggest? Okay. So I'm going to move this again so that we've got some space. Okay. So my vertices were x, y, or, well, in this case, C and T. Okay, so we don't get confused. C and T. And then we've got this thing called profit, which we are trying to maximize, and it's 35T plus 20C. Okay. Sorry, can you see these? That's a C. And that's a T. Okay. So my vertices were 36 and 0. Well, maybe we'll start with 0, 0 first. And then 36 and 0. Then 34 and 3. And then 0 and 20. Okay, so those were the vertices. So those are what we're going to plug in. Okay, so then we just plug in for C, 0, 
and t0 into here, we get 35 times 0 is 0, plus 20 times 0 is 0, so this is 0. Not a big surprise. If you make 0 tables and 0 chairs, you get no money. Um, for this one, you do uh, 36 chairs, so you're going to put in c is 36 here, and 0 tables. So 35 times 0 is 0, plus 20, 20 times 36 would be our answer. What is that going to be? Seven twenty. Okay, so we got that one. Now thirty-four and three, so thirty-four chairs, so thirty-four is C, and then three tables, so this is going to be thirty-five times three, and then plus uh, twenty times thirty-four. So we plug that in. Let's see what we get. Thirty-five times three. And then we're going to add to that um, 20 times 34 is 785. And then 0, 20, so we just plug in 0 for C and 20 for T, so we do 35 times 20 is 0 times 20. Or, sorry, that's not right. Let's try this again. Oh, yeah, sorry. That is right. 35 times 20. Because we're doing 20 tables, so 35 times 20, 0 chairs. So 20 times 0, which is 0. So 35 times 20 is what we get there. 700. Okay, so you can see by looking at these, the best option is right here, right? Because we get the most money out of all of these options here. We get 785 profit. So the right answer here is that we get 34 chairs, so that was C, and 3 tables. So hopefully that helps with that problem. I will see you in the next video.